and welcome back everyone to the video series dedicated show on Paramount Plus that has been over a year in the making. That's right, we're talking about The Challenge All-Stars Season 4 finally being held from us until this very week, this very moment. And I'm so excited to be talking about this double header, episode one and two, both premiered this week. And I'm so excited. There's so much to talk about. So let's not waste any time and jump right into it as we go to Cape Town, South Africa, where it seems like not just the cast is very excited to be here, but TJ is also excited to be here and see all the faces that are going to be on this particular season. He calls out Leroy and Cam right away. It always seemed like TJ had great respect and loved seeing Leroy on the cast. So it was awesome to see them kind of like reunite in a way. He's also very excited to see both Rachel and Kara back on the challenge, which a lot of the fandom is very excited to see both of them back as well. We also get some life updates. Tony has been in a five-year engagement, and he talks about if he were to win this season, he would first pay his taxes and then spend some money on his upcoming wedding, or at least make the wedding happen. TJ gives everybody the lowdown that this will be an individual game, that there will be only one person crowned the winner. And if you are that person to make the final and cross the finish line first out of everybody, they will be receiving $250,000. And then anybody else who makes the final and crosses the finish line will split $50,000. But this is where TJ puts a pin in it, says he'll see them all at the first daily challenge. Everybody gets to the challenge house, which is the same exact challenge house from the world championships, but everybody gets inside, goes into the pool, does the water slide, gets some hors d'oeuvres. We see Kifla give the house speech. We get a moment with Jay who is desperate to get redemption. He's been away from the game since season 26 where he quit the finals for not being able to drink fish oil and fish guts. In his life up to this point, that's all people remember him by. So he is coming into the game trying to change his storyline, trying to change the narrative that he can't drink the drink. The trio of Tina, Veronica, and Rachel are happy to be together, and they're going to be looking out for one another. We get a little bit into Steve's storyline and his hand modeling career. Apparently, it's gone off the rails since the last time we saw him. Went around All-Stars 2, he was doing quite well, but then the world shut down as well as he got sick and his hands got really like big and red to where it really put a lot of things on hold for him in the hand modeling space. We also see Ayana talking with Cam, knowing that she's going to be a very strong player. She's also rooming with Cam and wants to make an alliance day one, night one, which I think is a really solid move for Ayana to do because Cam's coming in with a plus one. If you can get Cam on your side, you're getting an extra vote as well. But somebody who isn't a big Ayana fan is Janelle, who played with Ayana back in All-Stars 2. And we see Janelle and Nicole trying to strike up an alliance. Uh, they're calling it the First Responders Alliance or trying to lock in an alliance with that connection. And Janelle says that she doesn't really want to work with Ayana because she is kind of like a wild card and can get on people's nerves. Nicole says that she understands and also has somebody that she doesn't really want to work with. And that is Laurel. Surprise, surprise. But this is where the game talk is put on hold as everybody dons their challenge gear heads down to meet up with TJ for the first daily challenge of the All-Stars 4 season. Which I love the beginning of this All-Stars edit because it just shows how loose and fun this season is compared to specifically the MTV series. It's personality driven. It gives you that old school challenge vibe and nothing gives you that old school challenge vibe than TJ having to do take after take trying to catch an apple being thrown at him from off screen where he's not looking at the apple. They kept the bloopers in, which adds fun and character to this season, as well as TJ has Steve come up and do some hand modeling to the stars that the players are playing for in this daily challenge, which is called Reach for the Stars. This first daily challenge is an individual game where everybody will have star puzzle pieces and they're gonna have to match those star puzzle pieces to their puzzle boxes. Be the first six players, three men and three women, 
to complete all eight of your star box puzzles and release your banner and you will leave with a star. A star is very important for this season because you will need a star to be eligible to run TJ's final. So with the top six performers getting a star, the bottom eight performers will be in the losers group and be in trouble of possibly going into an elimination. I have to say, I love this as the first daily challenge because one, it's solo based. This tests your puzzle solving skills as well as your stamina and endurance. I mean, the heat was getting to everybody. You could tell, I mean, Jasmine was shown laying on the floor. Brad was drinking heaps and heaps of water, trying to stay hydrated. Apparently Tyree gets off to a great start, but loses steam early. And that could be said for multiple people in this daily challenge. The person who comes out like a cannon is Cara Maria. Her finishing first overall and first for the women just showed everybody like, I came to play. I'm for real, don't mess with me. Yeah, I've been away from the game for a little bit, but I haven't lost a single step. If anything, I've gained confidence. So she was able to grab first place and the first star off the board. Brad comes out really strong as well, finishing second overall, but first for the men, grabbing his star. I have to say, Avery and Adam surprised me. Adam, more specifically, because he has been away from the game for... 18 years and it doesn't seem like he was keeping up with like the challenge lore he was calling the missions instead of daily challenges and veronica had to check him on it but him coming into this challenge and just absolutely crushing it finishing it third overall second for the men grabbing a star early and avery i felt she always came off to me as athletic but her finishing second for the women with players like Cam and Rachel and Laurel and Nicole doing this challenge as well. I just feel like Avery came out and was looking to beast out this challenge as well. The last two stars go to Brandon and Rachel, which I love to see. Other standouts, you have Kefla finishing fourth for the men, which was awesome to see. And he even got emotional because he said it was a joy to be here. He's doing it for the experience to show that he is still got it. And by goodness, he still has it. Tony finishes somewhere in the middle, but pulls Veronica's banner instead of his own. <laughs> and some players who really kind of disappointed me were Laurel and Leroy. She finished middle of the pack slash lower for the women's side. And Leroy finished in the losers group. I mean, when it came down to it, the loser group was Leroy, Derek, Tyree, and Steve, Jasmine, Veronica, Tina, and Flora. Which out of all of those names, I'm the most shocked to have seen Leroy finish in the bottom four. TJ, before he lets everybody go back to the challenge house, tells everyone exactly how these stars are going to work. These are the only six stars in the season. And these stars will be stolen. Because Kara and Brad finished in first place in the daily challenge, their stars are safe. But the other four stars are up for grabs. If you go into an elimination and win an elimination, you can steal somebody's star. Everybody but the people in the losers group, as well as Brad and Kara, will sit down to nominate two people from the losers group to send into an elimination. And because it's a men's elimination, it's either gonna be Leroy, Derek, Tyree, or Steve. Coming back to the challenge house, because it is the first episode and it's the first voting ceremony, people are gonna be leaning on relationships more than performance. And Steve doesn't think this is fair at the nomination ceremony. Keefla voices concerns about voting based off relationships and friendships because he's been away from the game for 25 years. And if we're setting the precedent early that we're voting mainly because of relationships and friendships, what does that say for him if he's somehow in the losers group somewhere down the line? And everybody listens to those concerns and says, yeah, but it's early games and this is how we're gonna play it. Everyone votes by their own criteria and they nominate Tyree and Steve. So Tyree and Steve don their challenge gear. Everybody heads down to meet up with TJ for the first elimination of the All-Stars 4 season. Catch a falling star elimination, where the two players in the elimination will have to jump into the mud pit, look for balls that have stars on them, and be the first to collect 12 of them and put them in their tube. The first player to collect 12 star balls will win the elimination, stay in the game, and get to steal a star from any of the four players that are eligible to steal a star from. The thing is, is that if a man steals a star from a woman, 
they have to give that star to a woman. And vice versa, if a woman steals a star from a man, they have to give that star to a man. And even people who already have a star can steal a star and give it to anybody that they really want to. So with those rules in play, TJ looks up to Brad and says, Brad, do you wanna come down here and fight for a second star? And Brad says, no, I'm good. Let Steve and Tyree duke it out. Tyree and Steve do this elimination and Tyree just gets off to a big, big lead. Steve knows that he has to be more strategic. He can't play this physical game because he's going to lose every single time they come up to the same ball. So he decides that he's gonna do the squirrel method, where if you find a ball, he's going to shove it up the tarp. So that way, when he has a good amount of them, he can take them from the stash and just jump up, put it in his tube, and then come back down, grab another one, put it in his tube, and then ties things up at 11 to 11. They're both frantically looking for a final ball while Steve is looking around for the ball and then remembers, oh yeah, I have one more ball that I didn't use. Jumps in, grabs it, gives kind of like a salute and a bow to Tyree saying, nice playing with you, and then drops it in wins this elimination. Tyree is still winless in his challenge career when it comes to eliminations. It's unfortunate for Tyree, but Steve is excited and he takes Brandon Starr because he doesn't know Brandon very much and he definitely knows Adam. They were on the same team back in season seven with each other. So there's a camaraderie and an alliance there. So it was a no brainer for Steve to take Brandon Starr. And that's where the first episode ends. So now let's get into episode two. We'll get back to the video very soon. I first wanted to take some time to say thank you so much for watching this video. But if you would like to support me and the channel further, you can go over to patreon.com slash angelcakevids. Over at Patreon, there is a ton of exclusive content ranging from exit interviews, one-on-one -on -one interviews, weekly live streams, premiere challenge content, commentary videos, watch parties, access to challenge fantasy games, and much more. So if you like the content that I'm creating and would like more of it, then please consider checking out my Patreon at patreon.com slash angelcakevids. Thank you again for watching and supporting the channel, and now back to the video. I will say that episode two is messy, both in good and bad ways, and we'll get into all of it as we get into this episode, but episode two takes place right where episode one leaves off. They're coming back to the challenge house after Steve's win, and the next day, we see some awkwardness between Nicole and Laurel in the kitchen. There's no talking, and it seems like they're the only two in the kitchen with each other. It's awkward. It's setting things up for later on in this episode. And then we go to a conversation between Tina, Veronica, Rachel, and Kara, and they're talking about stars, and does having a star early on in this game put a target on your back? And Rachel is trying to act coy. Really, all she's thinking of is, how can we lock in some stars for Tina and Veronica and myself while Kara here has a star and we're gonna have to try to bamboozle her at some point or hope her star gets locked up for grabs or gets stolen by somebody else and then we can somehow grab that star somehow and give it to the mean girls and my best friends. Which leads to a conversation that Avery is having about her star and it feeling like a sitting duck. Avery's not coming in with the strongest social ties and she's looking at all the other connections that people have and she's like, yeah, they're probably gonna eye my star before they eye Rachel or Kara's star. And that is foreshadowing. Something else that was foreshadowing was when Cam was talking with Jasmine and asking questions about how she feels about Ayana. Jasmine gives a face and then tells the story of what happened and their beef from All Stars 2. Cam hasn't known Ayana for very long, but somewhat agrees with Jasmine and even describes her and Ayana's relationship and friendship as love slash annoying. It's not a love-hate relationship, it's a love-annoying relationship. And that's not a good sign for Ayana because people that you've already played with recently seem to feel like they don't wanna work with you. And now somebody who has just come into the game and hasn't been living with you very long now is describing their friendship as love annoying friendship. That's not a great sign for Ayana, but it also is foreshadowing of what's to come later down the line. But put a pin in it as we're getting to the next daily challenge 
which is on a runway, and TJ drives up in a Winnebago, tells everybody about this week's daily challenge called Car Sick. There's quite a few steps to this daily challenge, way more steps than the first daily challenge. Now, Car Sick will be played in teams of four with one team of three. The teams will enter the van, the van will be hoisted up and then spun around to the ground. While they're spinning down to the ground, the radio will be giving clues to stickers that are on luggage on top of the van. Once you're on the ground, you can grab all the luggage. You're going to have to do a math equation to figure out the lock combination to open up the suitcases, grab the puzzle pieces out of them, put the puzzle together, the Road Rules puzzle logo together, and then have your time stopped. The team with the quickest time will win into power and win into safety, while the two slowest teams will be the loser group. I like this challenge. It's a spectacle. There's a lot of moving parts, both figuratively and literally. I think this is a fun challenge. I think this is a very difficult challenge. And some teams rose, and some teams drastically failed. Like team one of Derek, Janelle, Jasmine, and Ryan, as well as team three, Ace, Avery, Brad, Kara, and team five of the three-person team of Tina, Adam, and Steve all did not do very well on this challenge whatsoever. Most of the time, it came down to being confused about the clues that came from the radio and listening to them, as well as not really having clear leadership within those teams. And then if on top of that, you can't do math, you're gonna have a really, really tough time. And Tina, Adam, and Steve drastically had a disadvantage of being the only three person team. Having three people and if nobody really knows what's going on and they don't have an extra pair of hands to help out with the combinations or an extra pair of ears or math problem skills, there was two teams that absolutely crushed this. You have Ayana, Flora, Kifla, and Rachel's team who Ayana and Kifla are teachers and everybody was intense and focused on that team that they really wanted to win and they looked great during the challenge and after the challenge because after the challenge, Ayana and Kifla were doing dance moves and they were crushing it. I mean, Kifla does a split. That was awesome. And despite Laurel and Nicole being on a team, the team of Laurel, Nicole, Jay, and Tony did a fantastic job. It helped that there was minimal interaction between Laurel and Nicole. And so Tony and Nicole would do their thing. Jay and Laurel would do their thing. It came down to those two teams to see who was going to win into power and win into safety. And it turned out that Laurel, Nicole, Tony, and Jay did the best. And you should be excited, right? After being declared a winner of a daily challenge, especially one that looked very, very difficult, such as car sick, you should be happy. But during the winning team confessional, you get this spat between Nicole and Laurel where Laurel is just plugging her ears, making noises because she doesn't want to hear anything that Nicole has to say. And then Nicole storms off in anger because she feels that Laurel is just super immature. It was wild to see. Like, y'all won. It's not like you lost and then you're pinning blame on each other. Y'all won and you're still fighting with each other. We also hear that the losing team is Derek, Janelle, Jasmine, Ryan, as well as Tina, Adam, and Steve. And it is a women's elimination, so it's going to come down to the middle group having to vote between Janelle, Jasmine, and Tina. Two out of the three will be voted into an elimination, as well as Nicole and Laurel will be able to throw themselves into an elimination against one of them, if they so wish. And coming back to the challenge house, Janelle wants to be voted in, have an opportunity to steal a star and get one early, or she gets voted into elimination, loses and goes home to her family. She does not care who else is the other person. She doesn't care if it's Tina, or Jasmine. She does say that she doesn't think that Tina will be the house vote because she has a lot more friends. But again, she says she doesn't care who the other person voted in against her is. She just wants to be one of the names thrown in. She tells Cam and Ayana, then she goes down and tells everybody else about it too. Everybody seems to be on board. That's me. There's only three names out there anyways. It's easy for me if one name's already chosen, now it's just a 50-50 shot of who I wanna send in next. But then we get to the bar scene, and Ayana is like, it can't be that easy. You know, I gotta start stirring the pot here. So within a group of people, she throws out there that Janelle 
has been telling her that she really wants to go up against Jasmine, specifically Jasmine. And people are like, what, really? She told me that she doesn't care who the other person is. And Ayana's like, yeah, she's just trying to come off like a good person and say she doesn't care, but really she does. And she wants to go up against a quote unquote easy win or the most vulnerable person here. And of course that news gets circulated all around. Brandon is telling Janelle what Ayana said about her where then Janelle talks to Laurel to get some clarification. Kara goes from that group to tell Jasmine what she heard about Janelle really wanting to go up against her. So then Jasmine's like, I gotta go confront her in front of everybody. Janelle tries to calm everybody down and says, look, I did not say anything like that. I did not say Jasmine's name. I don't care who I go up against. It's not that big of a deal. Just vote for either Jasmine or Tina. I don't care. And a lot of people corroborate her story. But Ion is over there being happy about the drama she is stirring, which I understand. You got to play the game. I just feel like this is a little bit too early of a move that kind of could paint Ayana in a bad light moving forward in the game. Like you already are getting a reputation with everybody that you have this like love annoying friendship with everybody and then starting rumors early on in this game. I don't know how it benefits Ayana. I really don't. Back at the challenge house the next morning, Tina, Veronica, and Rachel are talking to Avery about where her head is at with the upcoming vote. Tina does her best Godfather impression, trying to get Avery onto her side to not vote for Tina, and that it's better to have me on your side in this game than be against me. Tina then leaves that group meeting and goes to talk to Janelle and says, look, I just want you to be honest with me. You wanna go up against Jasmine, don't you? This sends Janelle into a spiral where then she has to tell everybody yet again, that is not my thing. Don't tell me to be honest. I'm being honest in what I said. And what I'm saying is I don't care who I'm going up against. Just vote me in. You know what? I'm just going to leave. You know, she gets to a point where she's like, this isn't that big of a deal. If people are going to misconstrue what I say and is trying to paint me like I'm the bad guy, I I'm not about it. And Ayana even steps in and says she's crying because she's trying to manipulate everybody. This is what she always does. She gaslights, she plays people. I thought that at this point, Ayana was going too overboard with it. To get on Janelle when she's clearly emotional and already frustrated and kind of through with it for Ayana to be like, she's gaslighting everybody. She's trying to manipulate everybody in this moment. She's playing everybody. I thought she went way too far. Speaking of going way too far, we get to the nominations. Everybody's giving out their votes, except for Ayana, who wants to take this opportunity to talk for a long time. Now, granted, this edit can embellish a bit, but there are confessionals of like Cam saying that Ayana is talking for 45 minutes. She's going on and on. Leroy tries to make a joke, but then Ayana is like, hold on, don't interrupt me. And then goes on and on and on. She says, in one moment, I'm not going to say Tina or Jasmine's name. I hope Laurel or Nicole will volunteer themselves to go in against Chanel. But at this moment, I'm going to vote for Jasmine. Leroy is confused. I think he's already frustrated about how long Ayana took. But then when Leroy tries to ask a question, Ayana puts it on Leroy saying like, look, I understand that you're confused. And we can have a one-on-one -on -one conversation after this, but I don't think we should waste any people's time talking any more about this. It's like, what? <laughs> what are you talking? You just wasted everybody's time. And now that somebody is pushing back and asking a question, now you're going to reel it back and be like, no, 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 no. I'm not going to explain it. I'm not going to say anything. And we're not going to waste any more people's time about this. And Leroy is furious. Now, Granted, I think that Leroy is normally a calm, cool, collected guy. We've seen him on the challenge for many years, and he has been able to keep his cool. But it is in this moment he loses it. He gets up. He is angry. He is raising his voice, and then he walks away from the situation. I've never really seen Leroy like this before. It's very rare we've seen him like this, and we're on episode two of All Stars 4. It comes down to it. Tina and Janelle are nominated to go into elimination but in the very next scene, Janelle decides that she's going to leave. She packs her bag. She's saying goodbye to everybody at the front door, and she leaves. She says, this is too much. My mental health is low. I don't want to play these games, and I'm just good to go. Everybody says goodbye, except for Ayana, who says good riddance. Heading into the elimination, there's a lot of question marks. What's going to happen? So everybody 
meets up with TJ at the elimination ring. TJ goes over the rules of the elimination that's set up, and upon hearing that it is memorizing codes and having to do something more mental than physical, Laurel says, no thank you. Nicole definitely said, no thank you. And it's that moment that TJ says, well, Tina, nobody wants to go up against you. Janelle left, so technically you win this elimination. So you get to steal anybody's star. And Tina steals Avery's star. Which, can I just say, why? Why, why, why did we do this, you know? I don't wanna get too deep into like playing the metagame, but we know there's alternates that were brought to location. You know, I like the idea of giving Laurel and Nicole the opportunity to send themselves into an elimination to possibly get the opportunity to steal a star from somebody else. But I would have loved to have seen that if Laurel said no, Nicole said no, they brought in Genesis who was flown out to Cape Town, South Africa as the alternate for the women's side that she would have been able to come in and at least fight for her chance to be in the game. You know, why did why did it come down to where Tina just didn't have to go up against anybody and on top of that, get to steal? She didn't do anything to be able to steal the star. I know that that's not on Tina. It's either bring in somebody for Tina to go up against to win the star or don't give the opportunity to steal a star if nothing happens and no elimination is, I just don't like that. I don't like that. That was the only thing that I did not like and I felt like this episode left off on a little bit of a anticlimactic feel of nothing happening, yet Tina was able to steal a star. But that's just my opinion. Even with that opinion, I still think that these two episodes were really good. I'm so happy that All Stars 4 is here. The game is afoot and people are ready and already being messy, already looking to win, looking to score big, and I can't wait to see what's gonna be happening in future episodes, especially next week. But that is it for this video. What'd you think about these two episodes? Let me know down in the comment section below who surprised you in the first two episodes, who disappointed you in the first two episodes, who are you rooting for, who are you rooting against, which episode did you like better? And what do you think about Tina being able to steal Avery Star at the end? Do you think she should have been able to, or do you think that maybe the game should have been paused and because Tina didn't win, an elimination, she shouldn't have been able to steal a star. I'm just very, very excited about this season. Let me know anything and everything down in the comments section below, especially because I'm announcing it here that if you're still here, I wanted to let everybody know that I will be doing a comment palooza to commemorate the premiere of All Stars 4. So I wanna take a good amount of comments from this video's comment section, highlight them, talk about them, answer your questions, everything about that. I wanna know what you have to say about this season and interact with your comments on Friday's comment palooza. It's gonna be a one-off. We're not gonna do it every single week. We'll do it maybe this week, middle of the season, and at the very end of this season, because I will be doing tiny table talks, but it will be over at patreon.com slash angelcakevids. We'll be doing live tiny table talks. We did it for the past couple of seasons, and it's been really, really fun. So if you wanna be in on the conversation, having that exclusive live stream every single week, you can go over to patreon.com slash angelcakevids where you'll get access to those live streams as well as a ton of other great exclusive content Again, over at patreon.com slash angelcakebids. Thank you so much for watching, as well as I do want to give a special shout out thank you to everyone who supports me over at patreon.com slash angelcakebids. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank you to everyone who's watching this video up to this point. I'll be back really, really soon with more Challenge All-Stars 4 content, more Challenge content, more content in general. But until then, peace.